I got brought up by my mum to be a gentleman. I was brought up to buy flowers, buy the meal, don't ever let her pay, don't ever let her carry her bag, open mm-hmm. her door. So at, at school, as a teenager, I got mauled by women for, the, <laughs> for being that way. You know, I got, I got walked all over. Yeah. I, I, they liked me. They thought I was a nice guy. But I was the one holding their bag while they got with that guy. It didn't translate. And I knew as a guy, as a teenager, something wasn't clicking. And something about what I'd been taught about attraction by my mum, who taught me treat every woman like a princess. Yeah. Something about that advice wasn't translating and wasn't working. Now, I then when I started hearing from these books written for women, if he's like, if he likes you, he's already talking to you. I I looked at that mm. and I thought, God, I'm not a loser. <clears throat> I'm not someone who's got everything going wrong in their life and right. is like, you know, oh, that's why he hasn't got the confidence. No, I was like a, a guy who had some great things going for him. And yet still, I would look over there and go, no way. I was terrified. The, the idea of walking up to a woman and saying, I like you or I think you're cute. Yeah. Terrifying. You know, I, I started to say to women, listen, firstly, even the guys you want are nervous about coming yeah. over to you. Uh, so you might have to do a little more yeah. to make this a possibility. So that's the psychology when done in the direction of man to woman is much more powerful because men have these two instincts, provide and protect. But some of these instincts are kind of hardwired, right? We're, what we're doing with a lot of our better nature is overcoming certain programming that we have. You know, in a riptide, you get pulled out to see. Your instinct tells you in that moment to swim back to shore against the current. Ignore the riptide, I just need to get back to shore. Which is stronger, you or the current? Fighting harder won't save you. Thinking clearer will. And thinking more clearly means I need to swim sideways. I need to swim parallel. I'm giving myself a longer journey, but then when I'm out of the current, then I can swim back to shore. Instinct won't get you to do that because that requires thinking clearly. Instinct will drown you in that moment. And in a relationship, in dating, your instincts will get you killed. Don't invest in someone based on how much you like them. Invest on based on how much they invest in you. People don't do that. People invest on instinct. I really like them. And my investment is proportionate to how much I like them, not how much I'm seeing there's a mutual investment. An incredible connection is like, you meet someone, you connect and you have a great plot of land. This plot of land could be great because it's in the middle of a forest, could be great because it's on the cliffs overlooking the ocean. It's a beautiful place to build. But it's still just a plot of land. I see it for what it is. It's potential. Now what you need is two builders two people who are going to build something here and that requires two people who show up each day and lay brick after brick after brick after brick and slowly but surely create a castle most people have the experience of someone who joins them on that plot of land and they both look at it and they're like isn't this great look at the ocean this is great look at the view we have here look at the trees look at the this is amazing and they get real excited. One of them might be willing to build. One of them might be a builder. The other one might just really like the potential of this plot of land. And then you have someone who's there building every day. They're doing the investment. I have the woman come to me who's building and a guy who's left the construction site. And then three weeks later, he calls in after three weeks of ghosting her or just disappearing or just patchy communication and says, thinking of you. That's a builder who started building, then left the building site for three weeks and called him from home and went, how's the castle going? You can't build on your own. And the problem we have right now is there are too many people who value the connection instead of the castle. The castle becomes a castle because two people work on it and it becomes unique and ornate and there are secret passageways only the two of you know about. And there's an argument that knocks down a wall and then you build it up and fortify that wall Interesting. and it makes it even stronger and this one is uniquely yours it's been built by the two of you that's a relationship that's why you know a 20 year relationship on marriage or a 30 year relationship on marriage is is special 
is because two people have had to go through hmm. shit together. They've done things together. When I was 13, my parents took me to America for the first time. We go into Disney World and I learned something very interesting about myself there. Because of course I go in there, it's magical. But it was something that stood out to me, even more than Space Mountain, even more than the big ride. And it was the trash cans. On some level that maybe I couldn't fully articulate at that age, I saw the trash cans and I was moved by it. I said, someone cared enough about this place to theme the trash cans. It moved me. Often in a, in a breakup, often when people are going through difficult times with their partner or whatever, the thing they go back to is, we had that amazing trip. But we had those amazing times. They, they go to these highlights. They go to the space mountain of their relationship. But relationships are about the trash cans, man. Because guess what? In a day at Disney, you ride space mountain once, maybe yes. twice. How many times moment. do you use the trash cans? Every 20 minutes. And what will define your relationship is the trash cans, not space mountain. Mm -hmm. My concern is the number of people out there who are staying in the wrong thing because of the space mountain of the relationship or they're spending too much time grieving the loss of the wrong thing because all they remember is space mountain. I remember once having a breakup. It was the most painful breakup I've ever had. I was really, really in uh, a bad way over it. And a while later, I spoke to this, to this woman on the phone and I had said to her on the, in a brave moment on the phone, I said, why did, why did you want to break up? I said, what, what was it for you that I wasn't doing? She said, um, you were boring. So I said, why was I boring? She said, when I first met you, you were the most ambitious person I'd ever met. And she said, I never met someone with such an ability to decide they want something and then get it. And she said it was so sexy. She said, but as we went into our relationship, the more time went on, the more that was all you were. You were super ambitious. You knew how to get what you want, but it, you were so one dimensional. Mm. You know, it was all you did. Even in our free time, you were just, you were on the phone, you were on your laptop, you would talk about your business. You were always talking shop. There was never anything else you had to talk about. We didn't do anything spontaneous. We mm. never went and had adventure. <laughs> It was just all one track. And she said it, it got boring. Yeah. She was right. She was right. Was, there was nothing I could argue with. And I realized something in that moment. One quality can make you really attractive, but it won't keep someone. It can make you sexy. It can make you uh, intriguing. But it can even for a time make someone worship or idolize you. If you pair ambition, say, with an ability to enjoy life, now that person is really sexy. super sexy. <laughs> but when you combine it with something else, it becomes what I call a unique pairing. You find like what mm. seems to be a good man, but with an edge. That's, that's a unique pairing. Yes. And that's someone that becomes not an attraction, but an addiction. It's finding those combinations that make you go, mm. oh my God, the person I was with last night, they were this and they were this. It's the and. If you want to know, why you found it so hard to get over a certain ex, mm. look for the unique pairing.
arranged there was things. there was some unique pairing oh, that made you feel addicted. like they were difficult to replace and and that's what scares us the more unique pairings you have the more you become a rare bird in the dating marketplace when you become rare people get really terrified of of losing you be the person that has the unique pairings mm -hmm. that other people are terrified of losing i think there's also a greater sense of entitlement these days where people feel like they're owed and uh, uh, you know marriage is you've met the right person so it's supposed to all feel great and when it doesn't feel great and when it's not all working there must be something wrong with this person not with me not with the amount of effort i'm investing into this relationship there must be something wrong with this person ah it turns out they're not the one after all mm. i thought they were but they're not the search continues so wow. the entitlement has people believing that it shouldn't be effort we you know you have to maintain that passion you have to find new ways to excite each other with me and my partner we're always searching mm. we're always exploring each other we're always trying to figure out like what's going to turn you on tomorrow how do i do something that's that, that you didn't predict or how do i get you to know me a little less so that you get desire again in relationships you have to have both love and desire love isn't enough love is the the thing that makes me want to get close to you when i feel things for you i want to know your mind i want to know everything there is to know about sure. you i want to know what you're thinking i want to know what you're doing tonight i want to know who your friends are i want to become friends with them i want to you know, get close to yeah. your mom That's love, the desire to almost become merged. But desire exists in the space between two people. So you feel desire when there's a void and when there's some mystery and when you're still getting to know someone. So desire, ironically, is the thing that ends up creating love because desire is like, I want to get close to you because I don't have you. And then when I get close, we feel feelings of love, but not desire now. Everyone's going to tell you, now your kids have gone off to university. Now you have all this time to spend together. I said, but the problem is, you're gonna have nothing to talk about. You said it all, and you've been together this whole time. I said, I'm gonna give you a, a kind of strange piece of advice. I think you should use this time to spend some time apart. She go on holiday, and you go on holiday, and then come back and tell each other about it. Have that, some space, so that when you come back together, there's a little mystery to it. It will be scary. This is why people get very emotional about this and they get upset because they're like, what do you mean get to know my husband less? What do you mean like spend time apart? But what they don't realize is you never know your partner as well as you think you do. So the idea that you're like this and you know everything about them is a complete illusion. And secondly, you doing that is death to the relationship. Mm -hmm. So if you really care and if you really are a team, you'll be able to trust each other, but you'll be able to give each other space to create that desire again. Yeah. We're, we're gonna have days, weeks, times where we're going through something really yeah, serious yeah. and our partner's job is to show up, Yeah. you know? But a friend of mine who's kind of blunt said to me, some days or weeks you get to be needy and difficult and high maintenance and boring and, you know, insecure and then you don't. We get to be those things for a time until we don't, until it gets too much for somebody else, because we need to be, at, le at the very least, we need to show our partner we're committed to our own growth. I need to do the work to be the most loving, confident person I can be in this world. Sometimes you have to do something new. Not, it doesn't even matter what it is necessarily. It just matters that it takes your brain to a different train of thought, a different idea, a different moment. We're so used to getting our house exactly the way we know it all the time.
and having the wheel just turning the same way. Sometimes turning the wheel on its side and giving yourself something else to think about is one of the most valuable things you could do for your life, for your relationship, for your mental health, for your creativity, for everything.